So Trinidad and Tobago is celebrating 110 years as a movement, Scout TT. And right now, we want to highlight some experiences from Scouts who would have started and are still serving in the country. So we call in this the Flashback Series. Welcome to the Flashback Series. Thank you very much. Today I have an opportunity to have a, a conversation with Mr. Azam Khan. Mr. Khan? Hi. Thank you for the opportunity to be this, to be part of this um, flashback series. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. So tell me a little bit about your scouting experience. I joined as a cop scout in 1956, the Fifth Naprima Scout Group that is sponsored by Susamacha Church. So as such, of the 110 years that we are celebrating in Trinidad, I am to this year celebrating 66 years of that. As a Cub Scout, uh, we got involved in a number of activities, um, amongst them the Totem Pole, which was a competition for Cub Scouts. However, we weren't successful at that time. I think we came last, if it was anything, among yeah. the groups. Um, in 1959, I went up to Scouts in the same Scout group, and I earned 17 badges during that period. And led the troop also to successful district competitions. I also attained the highest level of um, scouting at that time, the Queen's Scout, in 1963. In 65, I was appointed the troop leader and in 1967, the assistant scout leader. I attended the second Caribbean Jamboree in 1961 that was held in while St. Trinidad. In 1968, as a leader, I completed and I received my wood badge. Nine, that is these beads here, mm -hmm. which is a level of training in 1968. And also in 1968, I had the opportunity to be the AD car and business manager to SK Ram Singh at the first national camp of adventure that was held in Chagaramas. In 1970, I joined Bank of Nova, the Bank of Nova Scotia in Sandy Grandi. Mm -hmm. And immediately, I formed a scout group, first Quaico scout group in Sandy Grandi. And that set of boys from first, we also went on to the Fourth Caribbean Jamboree in 1971 in Barbados. In 1973, I was appointed the National Scout Representative to the, to the National Youth Council of Trinidad and Tobago. And that gave us an opportunity to sell our ideas about scouting to the other youth mm -hmm. organizations. In 77, I was appointed Group Scout Leader when I returned to San Fernando of Fifth Naprima. And in 1980, for the Fifth Caribbean Jamboree, I was appointed the troop leader of, our, of the contingent for Trinidad. In 1980 also, I was appointed assistant commissioner of San Fernando. And in 1981, district commissioner of San Fernando. The district at, the, at that point, we, over the years, we were adjudged the best district in Trinidad and Tobago and won the national trophy for that. As a wood badger, I have given back to my service to the training team to train other leaders and I have been a member of the training team since 1968 and I have also developed a number of modules, training modules for the association. In 1960, 1986, I was the, in charge of the office staff and administration for the 15th Inter-American World Conference. In 2007, I was appointed in national, on the National Executive as the International Commissioner of Scouting. 2008, I was elected as the National Commissioner for Trinidad and Tobago, having and served two terms from 2008 to 2014. One of the persons that came up from a Cub Scout to National Scout Commissioner, lowest level, to the highest level in uniform. Um, one of the few things that was nice to know, I was the first East Indian 
to be elected as National Scout Commissioner, the first non-Christian okay. to be elected. I have attended a number of conferences, among them three Caribbean Chief Commissioners at the Messenger of Peace Conference, two international conferences and one world conference. During that period, for my service in the different levels, I was awarded the Medal of Merit in 1985 for meritorious service, the Silver Ibis in 1992 for distinguished service, mm -hmm. and the Golden Pori in 2003 for exceptionally distinguished service. At present, I hold the positions of Honorary National Scout Commissioner and I'm a trustee for the Scout Association. I have lived as a Scout and my working life with the motto um, Credibility, Visibility and Empathy, which have worked for me. Lovely. All I can say there is, wow, that's, that's amazing. So tell me, what drew you to the movement? In 1956, as a little boy, there were two boys on our street in Harris Street, San Fernando, Ronald Sahai and Wayne Beard, who, in fifth, who were both in Fifth Naprima Scout Group. And they invited me to a meeting. I went, I met George Sami, who was the, in charge. Mm -hmm. I participated in one or two of the activities for the day. And I enjoyed it. As a result, I started to come back and I became a member. The activities with the other boys were fantastic, but more so when we became scouts. The comradeship between boys going to camp and hiking mm. is something that is not easily described. You rarely build up a friendship. Today, I, I saw one of my good friends, Raul Adimola. We have been together for, for almost 60 years from Scouts all the way to today. Scouting also allowed us to expand our leadership. Mm. It gave us opportunities to lead patrols, which sometimes persons don't appreciate. And when you're leading a patrol, you're leading a little side. Yeah. Eight boys or six boys in the Cubs. And you are developing good things with the boys, bad things with the, where they misbehave, etc. But how do you handle it? And that is what takes you into, the, into your life and your work life. So as a result of that, I enjoyed my scouting. I enjoyed my camps. I enjoyed having gone to um, other camps. We invited Boy Scouts from Canada on two occasions, all the activities. And therefore, by the time I left, I was finished as a scout. Many persons sometimes want to leave. They think the scouting life is finished. In truth and in fact, you realize the leaders who were there sacrificed time and effort to allow you to enjoy scouting. And therefore, since that time, that is what I have believed. That we got to give up some of our time as leaders for the boys and now girls to enjoy their scouting. And we really hope that some of them will stay on, take our places and continue good scouting. Yeah, it's true, it's true. The experiences like that, camps, hikes, I can tell you as a scout as well, that that's the, is an indescribable experience, just as you put it. The brotherhood, the, the love, the fellowship, the togetherness, the fun, everything that, that happening in right. those moments is what just keeps you there and keeps you connected to the movement. Um, tell me, right? So keeping it Trinidad and Tobago specific, Share with me an experience that you'd like to relive, that you enjoyed so much. Not, not too long, a simple experience. In 1986, we had a 15th Inter-American Conference. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of persons here from Canada all the way down to South America leaders. And I was in charge of administration. And we had a, one of the two activities we had decided that we will try to do. While we did everything every day and produced all the documents and kept everything running, we undertook as a group to see if we could produce the, a brochure that um, dealt everything with the conference from beginning to end. 
It was the report on the conference then. Now, usually after a conference like this, one may be held two years later, etc. It takes two years to produce the report. So it could be ready for the next one. We undertook, and on the last night of the conference, when people were going up in their rooms, we were able to hand them the report. The report was done in two languages, English and Spanish, because a lot of the South American countries are Spanish. It was done with one picture in it. <laughs> um, but it was an achievement. Mm. And it was an achievement that Wool Scouting even wrote us and said, you know, it had never been done before. They were impressed and no other report has ever been done on that conference. That report simply was good and it dealt everything with the conference. So you're saying a report that usually takes two years to complete. You all did it in a matter did, of hours. We did it, well, we, we did it over that one week period, or four mm -hmm. days. And preparing things so that the last night when they were having the, the banquet, we took out awards the data, etc. And all that was part of it. We typed until about 2, 3 in the morning. We printed, uh, we um, minded the report and had it for them. So let, let me go back into that, that experience just a little bit, right? So you ran, you ran the administration for the event, which means you would have been organizing reports every night after every event in order for you to complete that report That's right. so soon. Tell us, about, tell us what we could do here and now to accomplish things like that. Two things. I had put up a, a motto on top for us also for that. that the difficult we do immediately, the impossible takes a little longer. So nothing is really impossible, but you've got to picture it, you've got to know how long it could take and what steps you need to do, mm -hmm. right? You need to build up your credibility. That is, by the time we, persons before, of course, said, there's no way you're going to do that report, all right? You had to show persons during the period of the conference what they were already getting, what was being produced in two languages for all, everybody in the conference every day. People were really impressed. And therefore, by the time we got to the report, we had things done. And this is why I mentioned about the one photograph. There was a picture taken of the conference. The person who took the picture knew that we couldn't produce the report. So he never bothered to bring it to us. But when he came up in the room the night and saw us working still, he went down, printed a picture and brought it up. Because he said, I feel all he could get it in. And we got that picture in also. So it's a question of the will to manage. You must have a will to want to manage something and succeed. I don't want to go into politics, but that could be part of our problem sometimes in Trinidad. The will to want to manage something. We want the... You can't have responsibility unless you're accountable. It's the same thing for scouting. Responsibility goes with accountability. Yeah. It's hand in hand. A former National Scout Commissioner told me that when I became the troop leader for Troop 1 at the Jambrain um, Shabuanas. You can't have responsibility to the account. And therefore, at all levels, leaders, district, national, we have to appreciate that. We've got to build on what others have done before. We can't go and rewrite history. History is there. We've got to make sure it's known, it's seen, it's appreciated. What you're doing in the series will help. And therefore, when you come after, You've got to try and do better than they did before. You're not putting them down. Mm -hmm. Building on it. If you build on it, then they know you want to do better. Yeah. If you're taking away from it, then it, you may be just simply trying to move some of the history around and sometimes it could be lost. So everybody needs to be able to build on what others have done. We stand on the shoulders of our former leaders. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much for the experiences, for the time and for the conversation. It was a pleasure. Kyle, thank you very much for giving me again the opportunity to be Not part of problem. this. No problem. All right.